Virtual Private Network VPN. Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about Virtual Private Network and what it can do for us using Windows Server. We'll see what it takes to install VPN in our lab environment. So we'll install VPN role service on one of our Windows Server and we'll use Windows Client of a home user to connect to our corporate network from internet. So what is Virtual Private Network, which is often called as VPN? A VPN, basically, it extends your private network, which is usually your corporate local network, to a public network, such as internet. So this means your remote and mobile users can connect to your corporate local network via VPN if they are connected to internet. So for example, a home employee or a user who often works outside of office premises can connect to your file server or other corporate resources if they are connected to internet via a VPN server. So it is a virtual point-to-point -point, which is P2P connection established between your remote users and the VPN server in your corporate network. So these connections can be secured and encrypted using tunneling protocols and IPsec. Early type of VPN implementations used dial-up modems or leased lines. So these networks are not considered as true VPNs because they passively secure data being transmitted by the creation of logical data streams. So dial-up connections, they are very slow and leased lines, they are very costly. So they have been replaced by VPN based on IP network and MPLS networks due to their significant cost reductions and increased bandwidth. Now VPN can be of two types, remote access VPN and site-to-site -site VPN. In remote access VPN, a user coming from internet can connect to your corporate network. Whereas in site-to-site -site VPN, if you have two corporate networks, you can connect with each other using site-to-site -site VPN. Now VPN have some limitations of their own. The biggest is that VPNs limit the ability of the connected client to be managed like the way you manage the local computers in your corporate network. Now this is the lab environment we have. This is what we are going to build. So we have a home user who is connected to internet. It's a Windows 8.1 client. And in our corporate network, which is contoso.local domain, we have a VPN server which is running Windows Server 2012 R2. It has two network interfaces. The first one is connected to internet and the second one is connected to the local corporate network. So we have a domain controller and DNS server which is also running Windows Server 2012 R2. We have a DHCP server which will be used to lease out the IP addresses to our VPN clients. So it is also running Windows Server 2012 R2. And we have a file server which will be used by our VPN clients to access the resources which are hosted on this file server. Now before we start deploying the VPN service, we need to create a new DHCP IP scope for our VPN clients. So let me show you how to do that. Let me log into my DHCP server as a domain admin. And I'm going to open up Server Manager. I'll click Tools and I'll click DHCP. I'll expand my DHCP server and under IPv4, I'm going to right click on it and I'll click New Scope. I'll click Next on the welcome screen and for the name, I'll type VPN clients DHCP scope and for the description I'll type this scope is used for assigning IP addresses to VPN clients. I'll click next. In the IP address range screen I'll specify the start IP address and the end IP address. So the start IP address will be 192.168.10.201 and the 
and the end IP address will be 192.168.10.210. So we'll have 10 IP addresses allocated for our VPN clients. So I'm okay with the subnet mask because this is the subnet mask that we are using in our network. So I'm going to click next. I don't want to exclude any IP address in the range that we have just specified in the previous screen. So I'm going to click next. Now this scope is used for our VPN clients. I don't want the VPN clients to have the IP addresses to be retained for eight days. So I'm going to change from eight days to one day which is more secure than leaving it for eight days. So I'm going to click next. Alright, I want to click on yes to configure the DHCP scope options now. So I'm going to click next. Now in my lab environment, I'm not using a gateway so I'll skip this and I'll click next. And the domain name and DNS server IP address is auto populated as my DHCP server is a member of my Active Directory domain. So my domain name is contoso.local and my and my DNS server IP address is 192.168.10.1. So I'm going to click next. I don't have a Win server. I'll skip this and I'll click next. Yes, I do want to activate this scope now. So I'm going to click yes and I'm going to click next. All right, I have successfully completed creating a DHCP scope for our VPN users. So I'm going to click finish. Now you can see the scope that I've just created. All right, now let us install the VPN role service by installing the remote access role on my remote access server. So let me go back to my VPN server, which is VPN01. I'm going to log into this as a domain admin. I'm going to open up the server manager and I'll click add roles and features and I'll click next on the before you begin screen and I'll click role based or feature based installation and I'll click next. I'm going to select the server from the server pool which is VPN01 and I'll click next and for the roles I'm going to select remote access and I'll click next. I don't need to select any additional features right now so I'm going to click next this page will tell us what remote access is so I'll click next again and on the select role service page you need to select which role service you want to enable on this server so the choices are direct access and VPN routing and web application proxy in our case we are going to install VPN only so we are going to select direct access and VPN now notice as soon as you click on direct access and VPN role service, the wizard will prompt you to add the additional features required for direct access and VPN role service. So you can also include the management tools that are needed to manage the remote access role service. So I'm going to click on add features and I'll click next. So the wizard would like to install web server role IIS. So just click next leave the default selections of role service selected for web server role and click next. I'm going to select the option that says restart the destination server automatically if required and I'll click yes to restart the server automatically without additional notification after the installation is completed. So I'm going to click yes and I'll click install. Alright so the installation has started So you can see that the installation is successfully completed but it says that the configuration is required. So to configure the VPN role service you can click on the link that says open the getting started wizard. I would like to let you know that there is an option to install the remote access role using PowerShell. So let me show you the commandlet which is used to install the role. So that will be install Windows feature minus name remote access minus include all sub features minus include management tools. So this commandlet will install 
all the role service of remote access. So it will install direct access and VPN, routing, and web application proxy role services. So let me close this. Now after installing the remote access role, we need to configure the VPN settings. So the initial configuration of the remote access role can be done by using the getting started wizard or the remote access setup wizard from the remote access management console. But the getting started wizard is a quick way to get the VPN configured and set up. So, so to configure the role, you can click on the link that says open the getting started wizard. So I'll click on the link. All right, now in the getting started wizard, you can see you have three options. The first one is deploy both direct access and VPN, and then deploy direct access only, and the last option is deploy VPN only. In our case, we'll select third option, which is deploy VPN only, since we are demonstrating only the VPN and not direct access. So I'm going to click on the third option. Now clicking deploy VPN only will take us directly to routing and remote access MMC snap-in. So I'll right click on my VPN server, which is VPN01, and I'll click configure and enable remote access. So now in Routing and Remote Access Server Setup Wizard, I'll click Next on the Welcome screen. And in the Configuration screen, you have various role services to select. In our case, we want only VPN role service, so we'll click the first option, which is Remote Access, Dial-Up or VPN. I'm going to click Next. In the Remote Access screen, you can select VPN or Dial-Up. In our case, we'll only select VPN and click Next. Now in this screen, I need to select the network interface that connects my VPN server to the internet. In my case, it is the public network interface, which has the public IP address. So I'm going to click that. Now we have a small checkbox that says Enable Security on the selected interface by setting up static packet filters. So basically, checking this option will ensure that only VPN traffic is allowed on this network interface and nothing else. So I'll leave that option checked and I'll click Next. In the IP address assignment screen, we need to specify whether our VPN client is going to get an IP address from a DHCP server or from a specified range of IP address that we are going to specify. In our case, we already have a DHCP and we already have configured a scope for our VPN clients. So if you don't have a DHCP server, you can manually specify a range of IP address from your VPN server for your VPN clients. So if I click on from a specified range of addresses and I'll click and if I click Next, I'll get an option to specify the IP range. But I'll click Cancel and Go Back because I already have a DHCP server in my network. So I'm going to select Automatically because I want to use my DHCP server to assign the IP addresses to my VPN clients. So I'm going to click Next. Now, if we have multiple VPN servers or remote access servers, and if you have a lot of remote users, and if one remote access server is not enough to handle all the connections, then you can implement something called as RADIUS, which basically allows you to set up the connectivity in one central place that will go ahead and control all remote access servers so that they'll all be consistent. Another thing that you can do with RADIUS is you can also do accounting. So you can keep a track of who is connecting and where do they connect and for how long they'll be connected, things like that. In our case, we don't use this VPN server to work with the RADIUS server. So I'm going to click No and I'll make this VPN server to use routing and remote access to authenticate connection requests. So I'll click Next. Now you can review the summary and click Finish. Now you'll get a message and what it says is to support the relaying of DHCP messages from 
remote access clients, you must configure the properties of DHCP relay agent with the IP address of your DHCP server. So what it means is that when your VPN client, when they connect to your corporate network, they are assigned an IP address from your DHCP server. And if you want to include other DHCP scope options such as DNS server, gateway, and other things, you need to configure your remote access server as the DHCP relay agent. Otherwise, the VPN client will only get the IP address from your DHCP server and all other things such as DNS server and stuff like that will be provided from your remote access server. So I'm going to click on OK and I'll show you how to do that. So now you can see remote access service is being configured and I'll click finish. Now as soon as the routing and remote access service is configured, if you go back to our DHCP server, so let me log in as the domain admin again. So if I go into address leases under, under the scope that I've created for my VPN users, we can see that all the IP addresses defined in the DHCP scope will already be leased out to remote access service. Now if I click refresh, it will start filling up. So I have 10 IP addresses allocated for this pool. So slowly it will start taking up all the IP addresses, though I don't have any VPN clients connected right now.